Hi, I'm Jeff Gonzalez, president of Trident Concepts, and today I'm here with Brownell's Daily Defense to talk to you about shotgun patterning. So what does shotgun patterning really mean? Well, since we are going to be shooting pellets at a target, we need to understand that as those pellets go further and further away from the muzzle, they start to open up. And it is possible that at a certain distance, the pellets open up so wide that the target that I intended to shoot is actually not hit. But other things outside of the target could be hit. So it's important that you have an understanding of what the limitations are of the particular loads that you intend on using from a defensive point of view. So let's define the different zones. We have three zones, the A zone, the B zone, and the C zone. We define the A zone as a single clumping of rounds inside of the target. So at what distance does your shotgun with that particular load actually create a single grouping? Now, obviously, it doesn't have to be all through one hole, but I typically like to keep them in a nice tight grouping that's about the size of maybe a quarter or a silver dollar at most. And at what distance does that happen? Most of the time with a standard off-the-shelf shotgun, shooting just standard buckshot type rounds, what you're going to find is that's probably going to be a lot closer than you think. You might see the five, maybe the seven if you're lucky. So that means that my A zone would end at about the five yard line. All right, that's just good information for me to know, meaning that if I shoot a target inside of that distance, it's going to be one grouping hitting that target right there. And that's going to be pretty devastating, pretty destructive. Now the B zone is defined as my shotgun pattern opening up, but not greater than eight inches. Eight inches being the standard target size for most of the defensive situations that we deal with. So at what distance does my pattern open up to eight inches? Again, off the shelf, what we're probably gonna see is somewhere between 12 to 15 yards. Again, it'll be dependent on your equipment. Now, that means that if I had to shoot at a target that's a little bit further away than that close range engagement, I need to be mindful that if I go too far, I now run the risk of seeing pellets that don't contact the target. Remember, rule number four is be sure of your target and what's beyond. So if you're shooting a shotgun, buckshot in particular, you need to be cognizant of what that distance is because you're responsible for every projectile that you fire. And even if the majority of the projectiles strike that target, if one projectile escapes, you're still liable for it. Now the C zone is where we actually move away from shooting the buckshot rounds and we transition to a slug, a rifled slug. This means that I am beyond that distance where I can't chance the fact of pellets escaping my target and therefore I'm going to transition to that slug. That slug is going to act as a single projectile and the slug rounds are extremely devastating. So it might be something that I actually need a little bit of distance to hit. I will go ahead and transition to that slug. So A zone is the, the distance at which point my grouping is going to be in pretty much one tight group. The B zone is going to be where my distance, I keep all the shots inside of eight inches. And then beyond that is where I'll need to transition to a slug. Now, one thing that I should have mentioned is that slugs are pretty accurate and you can shoot slugs accurately probably beyond a hundred yard line, depending on what type of sight system and your shooting ability. So the last thing we talk about is what if I'm in a situation where I recognize I'm beyond the B zone and I need to make a slug transition. So this is where your equipment, really will come into play. If you have spare ammunition that you carry on your shotgun, whether it's on the buttstock or alongside of the receiver, you might want to consider putting one, possibly two slug rounds there so that should you have to transition to the slug, you at least know where it is and you're not trying to flounder to find one. So now we need to figure out how to perform a slug transition. Once you recognize that the target is beyond that B zone and you need to transition to a slug, there's a couple of things that you need to think about. One, what is the condition of the gun? They'll more than likely be a round chambered and rounds inside of the magazine extension tube. The question is how many rounds are inside that extension tube? If you can keep it one round short, you'll have room to do that slug transition. You can pull the slug out of the carry position, load it into the magazine extension tube, and then charge that slug into the chamber. 
Another method is if you have loaded the chamber and the magazine tube to full extension, you're going to have to eject not just one, but two rounds. You'll have to eject the round of the chamber plus the round that falls into the carrier will need to be ejected. Then you can pull the slug, throw it into the open ejection port, chamber that round, and get to town. So you've got some choices that you need to make. Full capacity or one shell short in anticipation of having to do a slug transition. All right, I'm Jeff Gonzalez. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them down below. Until then, take care and stay safe.